My name is Krista and that is my husband, Kevin. We just embarked on restoring a 150 year old farm set in Pennsylvania that was in my husband's family for three generations. We're starting our restoration with the barn that was basically falling down when we started. We still have a long way to go, but as we stumble through this restoration, we are sharing this journey and learning together as we work to restore our future home at Sawmill Ridge Heritage Farm. So we're back and we've had an exciting week and um, the knee wall is officially poured. It's nice to have the uh, forms out of here and be able to see the big space all opened up the way that it is. Um, it, may, it feels like a lot of big progress. Uh, for sure. It's, uh, you know, we don't don't leave here at night worrying about whether the foundation's going to fall in or not. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's pretty big stuff. Yeah, it was pretty sketchy there for a minute. Um, uh, Dale came and dug out everything, and then there was, a, you know, not a full week, but a, a, almost a week that it was kind of hanging out, and it was scary. Yeah, I was, I had this dream of just, we'll dig it out and pour concrete 12 hours later. Right. And... No, it, it took a it took a hot minute. Well, right. even just building those forms was such a process, uh, and then I didn't realize how difficult it would be to keep the forms up against the wall. Um, the our contractors, uh, our Amish contractors, had to work really hard to keep those forms in place. Well, you know, they've obviously uh, what do I want to say? Had a form blowout before. Oh yeah. You know where that? I mean, that's that's how you learn. Yeah, they braced it really oh, yeah. well. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty crazy. I, I, I knew about that type of form, like, sort of from, I don't want to say TV shows, but you know, sure. it. Uh, You've I've seen it. I've seen it before, but I never really like saw it before. Like worked, you know. Yeah, not in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's also exciting because they've dug the front, um, the the foundation or the place where the foundation is going at the front wall. Um, so we're ready to lay the footer. That that's that's some sketchy, sketchy stuff. Yes. Like to think, you know, the whole front of the barn is is supported by these U-shaped bracings, and to see that to see the front wall like completely gone, and you know, Dale's, yeah. Dale's in there digging the, the footer with the mini axe in between the posts. and Yeah, it, it was very scary. Um, even when you, we cleaned up all the stones out there before that started. And even when you were getting those foundation rocks out, like it was very sketchy. There was moments that I'm like, you're too close to this post. Yeah, you know? I know. You get awful nervous when I'm digging it. Like all those old scabs of concrete yeah, that have the big none. rocks locked into them yeah. and stuff. But there wasn't much holding up this barn. No. And you think about that, that front of the barn being just so vulnerable in those moments. Yeah. But it was really nice when you got all of that cleaned up. You didn't realize how many foundation stones were out there holding up the original wall, yeah. um, and they weren't they weren't very solid. But you know, it was it was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Found found a lot of stuff. For yeah, sure. and we saved all those stones. We hope to build something with it in the future. So um, you know, that's cool. Yeah. So um, now they're gonna lay cement block for the footer. Well, we pour we pour a concrete footer in the bottom of the ditch, yeah. and then uh, three or four rows of block. Yeah, I think it depends um, because I've been working pretty hard to um, draw up what the front of the barn will be. Um, so we originally started with that sketch. Do you guys remember um, way back when I showed you guys a sketch of what the barn would be eventually? And um, I know our contractors were impressed because it looked like finished. So like. 
how'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I just laid it out on Photoshop. Well, now it's time to take where those um, new posts have gone in and incorporate that into where the stalls will be um, because we're going to put those Dutch doors along the front wall. And we have to be um, pretty careful because we have to have the posts be in the right spot so that a stall so, works. Well, yeah, and you want... So inside the barn where the where we've already put the little concrete piers and the, and the posts back inside the barn were sort of limited like there's a, there's a joint in the beam here so the post has to go here mm -hmm. right where out along the front there are a few limitations like that meaning like at this one particular seam we have to have a post right but you're, you're drawing with the measurements to make the, the Dutch doors in the middle and the openings on the ends and like to make it all lay out mm -hmm. that number one, it gives you the look you want from the road. Sure. And be symmetrical because I really want the doors to be evenly spaced. Exactly. And when the doors are evenly spaced, then what happens on the back end behind the doors, I mean, the stalls may or may not be... Uh, exact or or what whatever right. i don't know how you want to call it but yeah you know we we have some wiggle room inside behind the doors you just need to make sure that the door faces are well and i found that software where i was actually able to like put the the measurements of the barn into the software and lay it all out um and i printed that that big sheet off and it was yep. like hey this is really cool um, the thing I didn't anticipate is that it was going to be so important that it was right on because when we're laying those inch. course of block, they're going to not lay block at those doorways. Yeah. So I'm like, now, you know, this nerve wracking moment of as they're building this wall, is it all going to work out? Or are more, some of my numbers wrong or the way I've never done anything like this before. So um, I'm excited to see how that goes. I think I have it down. I keep double checking everything. So I think it's going to all work out, but. We'll see. I have faith. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, we got this great stuff for our future stable, including these stall doors. The hardware to go with them, some half doors, a bunch of hay racks and things. So we're getting ready. So we were laying, well, we, I started laying the reclaimed. reclaimed wood on the floor in the, in the hay mile bay, we call it. Yes. The second bay in from the end, uh, over the pig pen. Yeah. That, that bay, it really has no other use because it doesn't have big door access or, uh, in, in that, the existing floor in that bay, for the most part, they were just laid in. Yeah. They well, you guys random, remember random was, looking timber, like really weird stuff going on. Over a there. mess. It was a mess. So then you started laying the reclaimed, which I loved, but it was really hard. Yeah, I, I don't. First of all, I'm, I'm not a contractor by trade. So, you know, it takes me a little longer than any, than a, you know, a, a trained contractor. Sure. Uh, but then trying to use the reclaimed stuff again, or, you know, use the stuff over it's again. It's all different thicknesses. It's all different widths. widths it's lengths. And, and, and the other thing is, like, we're not working on 16-inch centers upstairs. Right. Like, it's random beams, and they, they're not necessarily square, so sure. they run, you know. So last Ooh. week we made the decision to purchase the material, and then we were going to lay the floor in. Yeah. Um, but... It's a big week because we have our first cutting of hay coming. Yeah, and S Sam and Andy were here, and... We just ran out of time, I so gave Sam the green light to go ahead and lay the rest of that floor. And they got it done, like... Hours. Yeah. Hours. It, it was done. Ridiculous. I had been Almost working, makes you mad. <laughs> I had been working at that in the evenings. I know. For I mean, I remember I had hours. lights on. I did, you know, generator running and lights on up there working at night and still couldn't. So we had the floor put in, and then it wasn't 24 hours later we had our first cutting of hay go in. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Are you living your best life? Yeah. 
So, um, you know, talk about our first real experiences as, um, you know, these, this hobby farmer or this homesteader, you know, we um, decided to cut hay for the first time. We're working with a neighbor who is kind of mentoring us through the process. And he said, hey, the sun is shining. Gotta make hay when the sun shines. Yeah, so uh, we had this cut of hay come in and um, it looks great. I mean, yeah. you know, we got it stacked up the best that we could. No, we and <laughs> But definitely, the best definitely that we could have at some, the moment. Definitely have some things to learn about uh, stacking hay and hay. Yeah, sure. I, I hope um, I hope that we get horses here soon and um, they start eating a lot of hay so that we can do it better next time. <laughs> so well, the good news is it won't take a whole lot of improvement to be able to say we did it better the second time. Yes. Uh, the other thing that <laughs> Sam and Andy got done when they were here is they completely finished the end of the barn. Oh, so yeah. all the sheeting is on and it looks beautiful. That was definitely the worst end of the barn. Um, so it's a huge improvement. Yeah. And, you know, it's really keeping the weather out of that side now too. For sure. So. Boards are on, no battens. That, yes. That's, They're going to come and do trick. battens last now, I guess. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for following along and hope you enjoyed this update. And uh, we will see you next time at Sawmill Ridge. See you soon. Next week on Sawmill Ridge. Stray's new. The footer is ready for the walls we built. And we're also sheeting the other side of the barn. Make sure you like and subscribe to never miss an episode of Sawmill Ridge Heritage Farm.